some very spectacular results that got a lot of attention and actually helped us and probably a lot of others uh, to think about getting a program and eventually starting a program. Now, I want to point out here that we did have sponsors. DOD has come through in the past, for some of us anyway, uh, much to their credit, to support us in this work. And around 2006, um, as a result of energetics, uh, uh, great results. Uh, DARPA funded energetics and ENEA uh, to send it in SRI to reproduce the, the energetics results. And Mike McCubre had some some reasonable success with that. He had uh, good good reproducibility and up to 300 percent excess. So that was all funded by by DARPA. In 2009, at NRL, I was able to get uh, DARPA and DITRA and NRL really to sponsor a program that started in late 2009, the impacts of, of um, um, energetics and, and with Kubre's results. And uh, this went until 2012. Uh, now, uh, the uh, other big event was CBS News, 60 Minutes, in 2010, or 2009, rather, it was late 2009, uh, when Rob uh, took a risk and endorsed what he found when he visited these labs. And I have to say that was a big risk that he, that he took. And in fact, it actually hurt us at NRL because uh, ONR was supposed to fund us and when that program came on, they dropped out. Uh, some of this money came internally to NRL. But, uh, uh, and then, um, uh, at, uh, along the same time frame, uh, Cindy Kimmel uh, was getting nervous, I guess, about funding energetics, and in discussions with, with Rob, moved energetics, downsized and moved energetics to, the, to, uh, to uh, the incubator at the University of Missouri. And they went on for another year and a half or so, and uh, in the more discussions that Rob had with Sidney Kimmel, uh, Sidney Kimmel basically wanted out, and Rob convinced them to fund a fundamental effort that this, this uh, uh, was not a technology. It needed some very fundamental work to be done. And the way to do it was to implant it in a university and do the fundamental work necessary to understand the effect. And to Sidney Kimmel's credit, he agreed with that and funded Skinner to $5.5 million, $1.1 million a year. And Energetics moved, uh, became Skinner and moved in underneath the umbrella of the university in the Department of Physics and Astronomy. Now, we now have uh, more collaborators in this, re-research and cool lessons, and I have to say this is an informal collaboration. We don't, uh, I try to stay away from NDAs as much as possible and that sort of thing, and very open. And so that's kind of the genesis of, of this. And I have to say that it's, uh, it's quite amazing what one person, what the difference one person can make in, in Rob Duncan and getting all this to happen, having a current conference here, and getting much more legitimacy uh, to this field. Now you may not know uh, Rob, he's been sitting up front, uh, but just uh, I, I was able to pull down his uh, picture from his LinkedIn bio uh, here. <laughs> so, so that's, uh, that's called 
championship sucking up to your boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Skinner staff is administrated, sorry, is uh, administrated located in the Department of Physics and Astronomy here at the University of Missouri. And here's the staff, it's uh, Orchidee, Azizi, Eric, Labor, myself, Bill Isaacson, Dennis Pease, Mark Serlin, and we report to Rob Duncan. And we have laboratory space that was difficult to do, you might guess, at a university uh, in both uh, physics, and so many of you who visit them, and Department of Electrical Engineering. And Dr. Schubert Gangapati was instrumental in get, uh, for us in getting that space, and we really appreciate that. <clears throat> so we have uh, a number of professors have joined in, and I forgot to mention that one of the the things that Rob did, again, that was extraordinary, was that he held meetings of the faculty here in Missouri and uh, got their enthusiasm and cooperation and we're doing work with Skinner. I'm sure the, the $5.5 million had something to do with that, but still, uh, getting their cooperation and enthusiasm is, is, a, is, is an accomplishment. Uh, John Gold, you're going to hear from him uh, tomorrow, or later today, is doing uh, 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 standard nuclear physics excitation functions for uh, palladium DP. Uh, Shubra in electrical engineering is doing our CNT cathodes, nanoporous cathodes, artificially structured cathodes, and depositions on membranes, which I'll discuss in a little bit. Herman Kaiser is uh, doing neutron scattering at the, at the reactor in, in here, here in Moore at, at Missouri. Katesh Kadi, Department of Radiology, is doing in-situ nanoparticle deposition on cathodes, getting promising results out of that. Uh, Scott Kovaleski is uh, making these beautiful miniature piezoelectron ion sources, very, very unusual, nice ion sources, and will do low energy ion bombardment. Mark Prelis, you heard from him uh, uh, Monday, I think, is doing neutrons from thermally shock TIDX diamond particle detectors. And uh, you heard yesterday from Peter Pfeiffer, who's doing fundamental hydrogen charging uh, with metals studies. So it's a nice collection of uh, collaborators here at the university. <clears throat> and then we have some students we're supporting. Uh, you heard from Charles Weaver uh, on Monday, I think. Uh, 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 you will be hearing from them. Uh, 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 Joseph, and Mathai, and uh, Somek, you heard from yesterday making uh, um, uh, cathodes. Uh, and then we have two more who we won't be, won't be hearing uh, talks from them. But uh, we do uh, have some young people in this which are uh, very, very uh, proud of. Okay, so um, uh, energetics brought in uh, you know a lot of uh, power to this Skinner Institute. I'm just showing here some of their better, better results. And what I really want to point two things out here is that these results, again, were ENA, NEA fabricated cathodes by Vittorio Violante. And we got large powers, large COPs, long durations. The, really, the best data we have in Skinner is 40% reproducibility on an ultrasound uh, electrochemical cathode system. And I'm going to be, we're going to be using this, and I'll tell you a little bit later about uh, that reproducibility to make some experiments uh, a little later. But they, they really bring a lot of good history in, into Skinner. Um, <clears throat> see. So there's many activities uh, that we have and the gas reactors. We have two gas reactors in, in the group, the Chalani replication and a high temperature reactor with a calorimeter. Uh, electrochemical cells, uh, uh, we're doing cathode development. There's many choices, self-assembled nanoparticles, nanotubes, artificial structure, new alloy compositions, de-alloying and nanoparous palladium. These arrows mean I'm going to discuss these a little further. Uh, magnetic fields, in situ ultrasound surface simulation, low discharge cleaning, hydrogen permeation, kinetics, radiation detection. And these are the related studies that I just talked about with the, uh, with the faculty. So, um, as far as cathodes are concerned, uh, what we want to do is generate um, a group of, uh, of uh, uh, collaborators, and we will, we, we will like to have more, in which we go through and systematically make cathodes 
and spread them around the groups to get data faster to see if they are viable cathodes or not. So we can run hundreds of cathodes fabricated, and we want to use common equipment and common protocols. The common equipment is this pink uh, cell uh, designed by NRL. Uh, they're easily fabricated. PJ King has fabricated quite a few. We, we got six of them from him. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, calorimeter is an NRL design calorimeter, uh, uh, calorimeter. It's very convenient for these studies because you can get in close. You can take this and modify it if you want to get in to, to, do, to tickle the cathode somehow. It's a differential calorimeter capable of one, willow, one, willow, one, one milliwatt sensitivity. And, uh, and I think using common equipment is, uh, is important. Re-research and coalescence uh, will be, are, are using it and will be using it. ENA's got them, TSCM's got them, NRL has them, of course, and we have some. So uh, expected progress as we hope to arrive at better reproducibility in uh, the electrochem electrochemistry experiment. So these are a couple other plans. Now we're, we're very open, so I'm telling you things that we're going to do here, not, not progress, we have it pretty shortly. So I'm impressed by the fact that I think magnetic fields uh, help out this situation and they're not well characterized. There's previous work by you know, Bacris, uh, uh, Mitch mentioned these yesterday, Bacris, Boston Gordon, it's all war, Craven and Lutz, and uh, Mitch Schwartz all believe in using magnetic fields and we're going to try to do this in some systematic way. Now the other one over here I have high hopes for, and uh, what we have is uh, a very thin bold wall on one of these calorimeters, or actually the first one's not on a calorimeter, in which we can get out very low energy radiations and detect them in air out here. And we think that low energy emissions has not been thoroughly investigated in real time, and the expected progress will help reveal the mechanism. Now we just heard about 1.5 kilovolt x-rays. <laughs> this system will be able to, to see those. Uh, this is, this is a schematic of what, what it looks like. We have these silicon nitride membranes which you can pur purchase commercially. The silicon is 500 microns thick and one by one centimeter and this silicon nitride membrane is one micron thick. So Schubert has already deposited palladium uh, on, the, uh, on the membrane, put on uh, a, a connection, electrical connection to it. And so we will do electrolysis on this system and we'll be able to get out very low energies uh, to show that. Uh, well, uh, another reason for doing this, not only can we get out low energies, but if you think of this in a calorimetric sense, uh, most calorimeters are sensitive to one, maybe 10 milliwatts. But let's suppose that the anomalous heat mechanism is active much of the time but at the micro or nano or pico watt level. And the calorimeter just will never see that. Now let's suppose in the membrane experiment, we see a one kilovolt x-ray at a rate of one hertz, and the corresponding power is a 0.2 femtowatts. That's 10 to the 12th greater sensitivity than you can achieve with, the long, with, with calorimeters. So under those assumptions, uh, that's very, very sensitive. <clears throat> now, this shows the transmission of what I have, palladium. I'm going to put down, we put a thousand, thousand inches of palladium down. Uh, here's one kilovolt. So you see we can easily get down uh, into one kilovolt with our, with our x-ray measurement. Uh, this is the silicon nitride membrane. Uh, we have uh, one micron thick, the red curve, but you see we can easily get our one kilovolt x-rays through it. This is, uh, oh, uh, now, in the ultrasound 40% reproducibility system, we can't really put such a thin membrane on, but we are going to put an aluminum membrane on it <clears throat> and, uh, uh, and, and measure heat at the same time. So, so now we can get down into the 10 kilovolt range uh, with, uh, with that system uh, of x-rays. Uh, we can do the water transmission. It's going to again, whoops, we'll be able to get through uh, through the water down to maybe 20 kilovolts. So we can see pretty pretty low energy X-rays there as well. And we're starting with X-rays. We can put any detector out there we want. We can put uh, particle detectors because they make it through. Uh, we can put IR detectors, IR spectrometers. And, uh, we can we can go in 
with the excitation beams of RF lasers. Yeah. I am awfully sorry to do this. I think your Superman's turning into a super jerk this session. <laughs> I only have one more view graph. So. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. I, and uh, that's just uh, shows we can get that out. The other mechanistic one is um, we are doing this uh, membrane experiment, and, and where we charge with hydrogen, look at the other side, you see a permeation current. From that, we can get out the diffusion constant, hydrogen concentration just below the surface and the relative surface activity. And by modifying two modifications on the palladium, we can learn a lot about what these impurities do, uh, all kinds of things, morphologies do, and so on. So uh, I have a conclusion slide, but I just go back over what I just said, so. <laughs> okay. Well,